I love the day before camp. I love the idea that the kids are at home, getting excited and being a little bit nervous. <laughs> Feels like it reaches out into their supper tables from us to them and back. We're like, we're ready to welcome you in, and um, they're ready to be welcomed in. It's such a good feeling the day before camp. And when you open it up? Yeah. Oh, that's so good. I know, right? Moment. You got it? No. Dragonflies! You got it! So when they come to us on Friday night, yeah. most of them are kind of nervous. For some of them, it's like their first summer camp, or it's the first time they've been in a space with other like trans or gender diverse kids. And so you can kind of feel the nervous tension in the room. They're not really sure. They're trying to get a feel for what it's going to be like. And then Saturday morning, they come in and they've got all this swagger and they've got all this confidence and they just like own the space and it's theirs completely. And so to like, like see that transition and to see that like click in their minds of like, this is mine, like I own this, I'm safe here and like I'm in control here is just like such a, we like, have a combination choice. really powerful yeah. but also really humbling to we watch that happen. Go. Camp Dragonfly, it's a day camp for trans, non-binary, gender creative, um, kids and their siblings and friends. It's just a regular summer camp, which I think is so nice. I guess what's different though is it is totally designed as a safer space. Kids can opt in and out of what they want to do. Typically for a lot of kids, they don't get a lot of choice in their life. Uh, if you're involved in mainstream schooling, your schedule is set for you, you do all these things. Mom or dad or caregiver tells you what your daily schedule is. Um, so at camp, we really want to encourage and we embrace kids making choice about their lives. And whether that's like gender identity things or gender diversity things, but also simple things like I want to go to drama and not go to cooking, or I want to do neither of those things. Um, so we really try and build this culture of like believing kids and trusting kids and empowering them in their bodies and in this space um, to be leaders. And then I think the other thing that sets us apart um, in particular from maybe other like trans camps is like yes we are trans camp um, but our focus really is like on having fun, building community, creating connection. Um, yes our campers are trans and that's certainly a part of camp but it's not our primary focus. Uh, we just want to build community, be together, have fun, play, grow, learn, connect. Uh, so it's more about embracing that side of summer camp. So the space we're in right now, it's in Edmonton, and it's a day camp. So they get to go home at night, tell their stories, sleep in their own bed, come back in the morning. And that lends this kind of very like family feel, the family's involved because they see their kid at night. In terms of the accessibility of this building that we're using right now, uh, there's an elevator, there is not a step in. Um, we definitely want to accommodate any needs that people uh, let us know they have. Attendants are welcome, interpreters are welcome, service dogs are welcome, accommodations that we can make, we want to do that. We've got a medic um, on the team, we've got social workers on the team, heart monitors on the team, so we're ready. Basically it came out of seeing that gap, uh, seeing the need um, that when I was working at a teen LGBTQ summer camp, we would have parents asking, you know, can my kid come? They're too young, but can they come anyway? And we really couldn't accommodate that huge spread of ages at a teen camp. So we, we knew for many years it was a missing piece. And that's so great that kids are able to come out so younger that they uh, feel safe to express that sense of self that they have, younger and younger. Um, so yeah, it came out of a, a need we wanted to fill.
I think for me, like the big dream is to do like proper sleepaway camp eventually, sometime in the future. Um, and I like I hope to see us continue to grow. Um, I think that AJ and I both also really hope that um, we want to be in this place of transition. So we're able to hold the space right now, and that's really like a humbling experience and a powerful experience for us. Um, but to be able to then actually like build this and create it with the trans community, and then say, okay, like if you want it, it's yours. Build it and take it, um, and not not feeling like territorial around it or like it's ours. Um, we want it to be something that is self-sustaining, that the community sees value in, and that they want to continue to build, um, even as we're able to step back and step away from it, and not out of like a lack of love um, or passion for this project, um, but over knowing that it was never really ours to begin with, that it was ours as a larger community, and that part of that is being able to let go and say, we did it, we held the space that we needed to as allies, and now it's our time, chance to step back. At the same time that I'm here to support others. I feel like I'm doing a lot of healing work in myself. Um, where I have this big community and all of the other volunteers and staff, they are all part of like my family. Especially since this is run out of a church building. Um, it's really kind of impactful for me because I've never seen a church be not even just, oh, they welcome us here, but like, we're here. This is a space that we are occupying and we're not just being allowed to be here and like, oh, we've got like one rainbow flag hanging up anywhere. Like there's a big bin of like all the rainbow stuff and all of the, the queer stuff. And so for me to feel like I have a place here and it's like rewriting this narrative that I've got in my head that says that I'm not welcome at church. I decided to volunteer because I find that the, be the self that I can be when I'm around kids is a self that I like. Kids are my home and I love taking care of them and so when I got to realize that there was a place where it was going to be kids who needed that that queer love like I love being able to give kids the queer love that they might not get from from other sources so it's like the two things that I love best coming coming together. I wanted to be like a good role model for these, these children because for me, I grew up in a very unsupportive home and I know how much damage it can do to children if they don't have a good support system. Like, it's very important that people use the right names and we use the right pronouns for them and it's very important. And I just, I really wanted to be a good role model for them. This whole weekend has taught me, like, I'm not alone. Yeah, so last year we had around 20 kids and this year, Within that one year, we've doubled it, so we've got 42. And honestly, it's just gonna keep getting bigger because I think it's gonna really be um, something that there's more, more and more a need for as long as other camps aren't catching up to make their places safer and safer. Because that's another way this could go, right? Other camps could um, work to to be a place where trans folks will feel like they can sign up. But we're really seeing from our parents that they're pretty weary to, um, to send them to just a general summer camp. It's beautiful to see parents who are like loving and accepting and want this for their children. Um, but there is always a piece of me that, um, it's like sad for me to know that there are kids out there who probably saw advertisements for Camp Dragonfly and they they can't tell their parents about it, you know, that they can't take the flyer to their parents and say, look, I want to go to this and I need this and this is something where I would feel safe and comfortable. Um, and that's like hard for me to know, you know, we have this beautiful space and it's so full of love and connection and power and the kids who need it most probably can't access it because their parents are not ready to go on that journey with them and maybe never will be ready to go on that journey with them. And I don't know how to, you know, I don't know how to get past that. The most important thing is community connection. Do you think the kids get that from this? I do, and I think my hope with with Dragonfly and this kind of ties into those kids that we can't reach right now. My hope is that for the 42 kids who are going to come and hang out with us this weekend, that they're going to see this community connection and they're going to see value in it and that they're going to embrace it. And they're going to embrace it so strongly that they're going to take it back to their schools and back to their sports teams and back to their art clubs. Um, and that they're going to be able to bring that feeling there. So for those kids that we couldn't reach here, 
I'm hoping that all these little activists and all of these kids are going to take just a piece of that um, and bring it out into their communities and that eventually somewhere down the road, whether they're 15 or 20 or 30, um, they'll eventually find their way back to our community and that we'll be here waiting for them when they can get to us. Thank you.